Okay, so it's seven o'clock and we can call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. The note Mayor Warnikoff is absent. Council Member Alps. Council Member Hufti. Council Member Taylor. Present. Vice Mayor Hasco. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, given that Sarah's not here, I'm gonna be running uh, the meeting. And the plan is uh, as the agenda sets out to have two presentations, then the town manager's report, and then public comment on any of the above or any of the um, uh, other items, but we cannot engage in discussions of the oral communications. So let's get started. The first item is a presentation by the farmer's market, uh, Good Roots. Yeah, if you could, and make sure the uh, microphone is switched on, please. Yeah. Hi. First, thank you guys for letting us host the market here. It's been awesome. Um, this is my fourth season starting, my third year running the market manager. So my name is Joe. If you don't know, Joe Lino. Uh, welcome. Or thank you for having me here. Um, this year, we're having it ready for a really good year. Um, something new, uh, we have a new egg person. <laughs> they have an egg farm that's right up, up the up the hill skyline. So they're local, um, little egg farm there. He also sells uh, feed. So if you have any chickens in your backyard, he sells feed too. <laughs> uh, yeah, he brings the feed and no, no chickens, but eggs. Um, one big thing we're having this year, something new that's gonna happen right away is Devil's Canyon Brewery will be joining the market. And uh, they're going to have a booth. Well, they'll do, they'll do sampling too. So they're going to do the whole pro the whole setup. So they'll have a booth and uh, root beer and adult beer. <laughs> but they they don't they brew their own root beer. So I think that's a good opportunity for us with our families here, the kids, to bring that on. So they'll they'll be starting the pro they're in the process of getting their health department stuff done. So that should be done within the month. So for summertime, so for our summer camp or our summer concert series, we'll have them and Fogarty's looking to do. The same thing, so they're they're working on. So we'll have Fogarty and Devil's Canyon serving tastings for our families. So those are two new things I think would be awesome. Um, we have everyone's finally back. <laughs> our, our veggies and stuff at the season, you know, old season. We have organic veggies, um, fruit. I'm gonna start a new a new juice guy this year. These cherries and fresh pressed. Um, Mandarin juice and cherry and pomegranate juice and cherry juice, a bunch of new fresh fresh juices, and then we're not. I mean, we have a lot of loyal vendors who've been here since the duration of the market started. So they they support this. They help us keep it going as well. They've been, you know, nonstop rain or shine, and we are year round. So we you know we don't take a break. So a lot of markets take a break, but they they battle with us through the rain shine, and we take care of them on the rainy day. We make sure they don't have to. You know, it's, it goes both ways. Um, but other than that, yeah, market's great. Um, you guys support us awesomely. I mean, we have regulars every week that come say hello. I mean, awesomely. Um, I mean, milk, bread, fish, eggs, desserts, and sides. So I mean, we have enough for, and then chicken, the road chicken, chicken every week. And I will be adding a few new food trucks as we get the summer going. Um, Cabello's will be back for the, for the summer concert series, Capello's barbecue. And then I've been working on a few different other Mexican food places just because, just, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we're, it's great. I mean, I think the last few weeks with the weather being good has picked up foot traffic. We still have any full foot traffic, I don't think, like with the soccer teams and stuff coming around. So they were going to have a good, a good summer. This year. It was a good summer. And last year, the second concert series, second or the July event was like crazy foot traffic. So I'm expecting another good year for that one too. So just, just in case you didn't know that. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, it's okay for us to go through questions. Okay, any council questions? 
Well, first, thank you for, for everything you guys oh, do. It's great having the farmer's market. Um, is there anything else we can do? I mean, just you said support from the public. Is there anything else we can be doing? Anything else? That no, I think I think around? just you know, the, 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 the promoting through the neighborhoods and our, our all of our stuff. I mean, we're a small you know, we're a small community, so we can't create a whole bunch of new foot traffic. We have gained a few others, like Redwood City is coming over on Thursdays to, to, to come say hello on a destination. So I, I want to take care of them too. You know, having some other stuff that makes it fun, but really. We're here, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the events are good. I think we have just some amount of, in the summertime. I mean, really, the parking is good. Just on those big days, we, we have to be ready for those days for parking yeah. uh, on those. I mean, as you know, but other than that, it's been, it's been really awesome. I mean, really, we've been really taking up steam. The COVID rainy times have really hurt, but then also helped build a lot of loyal clients. So, like, now they're all, every, now everyone's home. Sure. I think it's going to be cool. Like, finally, Everyone's routine's kind of back after mm -hmm. a couple of years, I think. We got and we could, anyway, so I think it's gonna be the summer's gonna be good. Um, yeah, I, I mean, not, I mean, just come out and say hello and buy 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 a t-shirt next to you, whatever. <laughs> and then bread, uh, Little Sky Bakery, as I've been our force through this, this thing, so they really support to help this market grow too. So they, they, they right. Anyone else? Oh. Hi. Could you why did you uh, get started in this, and do other? Do you do other markets elsewhere? Um, I used to. I, I grew up in Fresno. I live here in Palo Alto now. Um, but I grew up in produce, and then I went to a farmer's market to sell one day, and kind of charismatic a little bit. <laughs> and it was kind of fun to sell my product that I knew a lot of. And then how the the clients we have here are, are, are our customers here. Same thing. Like they really appreciate the fruit. Or the, the products, the products, and that rip, that back and forth. I think all of our vendors are kind of. Or, or we have I have a niche of smaller groups. They're not like a lot of chainy chain guys, so they really appreciate the the one on one, the hand to hand kind of love. Um, but anyway, so I have this market's a good thing. I moved here to kind of. I took over another company once, and I helped do farmers marketing with them. But I like the group. I like this being kind of the together the organizer bring, bring your organizer can i don't like to be manager but i fall with style weekly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah no i i like putting together people that bring that same synergy to the mm -hmm. both for both sides mm -hmm. i think can i right ask another question uh well how does the, how do the finances work for you so personally i get paid through good roots so i get a, a salary uh, for hours out an hour salary uh Thursday or whatever I get paid six seven hours a day, um, and then I collect stall fees from our vendors and turn it into our team. And that's because we and we do another market, we do a couple markets uh, in Carmel, one in Carmel on Thursdays. I think that's opening another one on Saturdays, but I'm I focus only here. <laughs> so we we and we do other stuff, good roots of other stuff through, throughout the peninsula. Yeah. Craig, anything? I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, thanks. We, I think everybody appreciates having a, a market that's in the local neighborhood. So, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, and it's, you know, yeah. I remember we first trying to put it together. It was like, you know, are we going to be able to find people that are willing to come? Because we're a pretty small community. Yeah. So, it's great that you've been able to make it work. So, thank you for that. No, no problem. It's been easy. Been not easy, <laughs> but fun. Yeah. yeah. So I was curious. So you were saying Devil's Canyon. Um, mm -hmm. When are they going to? So their start? paperwork's in. I just spoke okay. with the young man Tim okay. today and via text. He said uh, we're waiting, just waiting for the uh, health department to get finish off the paperwork, sign it up, okay. which is usually takes about four to six weeks. Okay. And we're about third weekend since they. So a month or so. Within, I, yeah, yeah, before right before summer, for sure. Within a couple of weeks, but before summer, we'll be. I contacted him today to make sure we could set up a the best spot possible. I mean, to walk through, kind of do a little walk through. Mm -hmm. um, I'll talk to Carrie too. So maybe there's some other people, you know. Mm -hmm. I, mean, but I think in the market's the best because I want to put traffic into the middle of the market. Just sure. But I mean, also the best possible <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, no, no, I think that sounds great. And do you know, are they going to bring like crawlers or just? I, 
I, so I, I'm, I'm, the next conversation, our next conversation will be that. Okay. Um, okay. First, but most likely, I'm not, I'm to be honest, probably everything, a little bit, a little bit of crap. I'll probably do some tap stuff and, really? okay. bo nice. and bottle stuff. Okay. But I'm most like, most interested in, in the root beer. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, I love beer, but I think for our demographic back here for the family, mm -hmm. the root beer would be a really good uh, draw. But, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, yeah, right. but I mean, uh, and then they also do like a, they just do Sundays ice cream, a root beer floats at their, right. so I think maybe we can work on how to incorporate that here. Too. Yeah, because their, their root beer has always been super popular at Alice. Super at, good, at, right? at Alice's, so yeah. So. But, um, yeah, so they're, I mean, within, hopefully no later than June, but I would say in, within my Mar May, at least I'm here. Nice. So. Great. Well, again, thank you. No problem. Yeah. Hey, it sounds like Craig's signing up for whenever that date <laughs> yeah. is. <laughs> Every week, right? Yeah, Every week. Yeah. I'm uh, writing it down. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I mean, that might merit a little extra ad advertising in town yeah um, so so once we once i get them locked in for sure on the first day i'll let you guys i'll let everyone know and yeah so we don't super freak, you know, over exist for yeah something but yeah this should be soon and my only question is with all the rain we've been having this year and last year um it sounds like things have gone surprisingly well but i i do worry about that so both i mean as farmers market sales people we're all used to it, especially in the Bay Area. Yeah. So it's kind of a, and then as, as our company, we we make sure we, they don't don't overcharge on days like that. And if for any day that rained out, we just kind of work make it, it work. out because it's not. I mean, we're here for you for us, and that mm -hmm. few dollars that we collect is not, you know. But when summer's yeah. coming. Plus, we're open like during, like I said, on the in the holidays stuff that a lot of markets aren't. So we're just kind of just. For every, it's for everybody. For the vendors who don't have anything really going on, for customers or clients who are home and for the winter and holidays, mm -hmm. and me, I'm then fall off the so I just yeah. <laughs> give me something to do too. So it's kind of yeah. A, yeah. But we're used to the rain. I mean, for the most part, yeah. and, uh, and 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 yeah, it would, so since without the rain, we don't have the fruit. So yeah, it goes well yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it yeah. is. Last last year was worse than this year. I will say. Yeah. Okay. So, good. Well, we made, we, this year was was. Cake Easy. Last week, we were so after last week, the, I know. can appreciate that. Uh, no, I mean, my only uh, comment is thank you so much. It adds a lot to the community. I hope it uh, creates opportunities for the vendors. And, um, you know, if, if we can support you, um, you know, keep in touch. I will. Yeah, I, I, we're doing great. I, think, I mean, I think this year I'm finally ready to I think we have a good enough market to support people to come and say hello to it. Or else we were spotty. Some people were kind of in mm -hmm. and out. And, we have, I mean, I'm pretty, our, our line of solid, so that would be very good. Super. Can I Thank ask you. one more question, yeah, just real please. quick? Um, do you have an email address or something that if people have suggestions for yes. things they'd like? So we have a good, we have a, our website, Good Roots. Uh, okay. I don't know how about that. that, that that's okay. Yeah, I yeah, wasn't, we, but yeah. Our website where we, yes, they, uh, our Facebook and our regular page. Mm -hmm. they would reach out to. And then personally, I have my email that Carrie had that they ever reached me. And then. This year, I do have a little more responsibility. I'm the stops. I hold the, the bus stop now on <laughs> Thursday, so you'll see me out there on the bus. Congratulations! Today is awesome. I was a little nervous at first, and the first day, I definitely had like a vendor have a little problems. I was in two places at once, but the kids are amazing. They were so respectful. I I, I was nervous for that part because I've worked with kids before, and I know how honest they can be sometimes, but. <laughs> But they are awesome. Thank yous and you know, you know, hello Joe or thank you. Uh, their kids, I mean, so it's been awesome. That part has been cool. Good addition. That's nice to hear. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll look forward I, to it. I had Bye. two really. I I hope they are, are okay. Questions. Um, one is cleanup. How how does that go? And uh, how do you make sure that the place is cleaned up at the end of the day? We we don't have a whole lot. I mean, we don't do most of our vendors don't do a whole lot of sampling. So not a whole lot of trash like like the main trash would probably be from uh the great guy who has a freight you know play in a foil so i mean mm -hmm. so we don't have a whole lot of trash and and our vendor like i said i have a, a core group of veteran vendors for the most part so it's come in their business boom boom they clean up after themselves for the most part and i stay till seven to make sure it's and you you go around at the end at seven and make and just not, check I mean, the grounds check around you made for other stuff too be 
people yeah. leave stuff. Okay, people so, leave stuff. So There's more, no more doubt more about it. Trash, so the, the more I find more things than I do trash. Right, right. Yeah, I stay till I, I get here about noon or at noon, and then I leave one after the last time I leave, so, which is no limit. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of trash. I will, now, this summer, maybe with a lot of foot traffic and more stuff coming up, but we have the trash cans I roll out, and mm -hmm. I've never really been. You you roll out your own trash cans. So they, we have them prepared. I just pull them for the, the, the okay the to, into the middle. Use, okay, um, so they're more visible. But I mean, I've never gone more than overfilled them, even on the busiest day. Okay. Right? And is it conventional for uh, farmers markets to charge the venue? In other words, us. Yeah. To have a stall here. Uh, I, or, that part I'm not. I, I mean, it's grassroots always, uh, like in their other in their other setups. We these do. these fees go to grassroots. I take it. Good roots. Yes. Good roots. Sorry. Yes, they go to our our company to help fund the other stuff on days like rainy days and things. And then I pay for uh, musicians and, and uh, to come out weekly. That's I think that comes out of that. Maybe or it comes out. So yeah. Um, to be honest, I can't. I can't answer too well to that no, particular question. But uh, no, that's that's fine. But as far as you know, it's the same every on yeah. all, with all their setups. Our, with our events, we with you we with the uh, with good roots. Yeah. We need to bring our events. Our knowledge. The, our knowledge to these events. Events. Yeah, they're called events. Thank you very much, and it's been a pleasure. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Keep it uh, up. Thursday. Oh, yeah, yes. we'll be there. Absolutely. All right. The next item is a presentation by the Sequoia Healthcare District 10. I don't know if they're. Ah, here we go. No worries. We did, and hopefully they work. They have so far. You just have to angle it. Perfect. Uh, Vice Mayor Haskell and council members. My name is Jerry Sheffron, and I'm on the board of directors of the Sequoia Healthcare District, and really appreciate um, you giving us the time to kind of give you an update on uh, what we're doing and uh, how it affects this community as well as the larger community that we serve. So, um, first of all, um, we're a special district. Uh, we are supported by tax dollars. So your property taxes, a small portion goes to us every year. Um, and um, those tax dollars are uh, what we use to support and to try and improve the health of uh, members of our community. So the first thing that I want to emphasize is that we're your healthcare district. Um, we're not Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, or something else. We are really partly Portola Valley's healthcare district. Our mission is just to improve the health of our residents and to do so in a responsible way, paying attention to the fact that we are supported by your tax dollars. Our vision is for all district residents to uh, experience optimal health, both physical and mental, uh, throughout their uh, lives. The healthcare district was formed in 1946. And uh, at that time, trying to improve the health of the community, I believe, was thought that if you built a hospital, that you would then bring doctors in the community and that would make the community healthier. And that was probably a pretty good strategy at the time. Um, we are no longer connected to Sequoia Hospital in any business sense, although we have many projects that we do together. Um, but we really 
try to keep people out of hospitals. We think the way to provide the best community health is to prevent people from getting sick and needing to go to the hospital. So our definition of healthcare has expanded and certainly over the time that I've been uh, a member of the uh, board of directors, I have evolved in terms of really understanding the things that keep people healthy. For instance, education. Um, there's really good studies showing that if a child is reading at grade level three and they're in the third grade, that their chance of leading a healthy life is much better than somebody who cannot read at age level three. So that's one important area. Food insecurity is something we've seen dramatically rise over the last few years, and it's been an important part of um, what we do. Uh, housing, uh, I was gonna promise you that I wouldn't bring up the housing element tonight, <laughs> um, but housing is a big issue um, in terms of health. Early childhood development, and certainly access to quality and affordable healthcare services. Not everyone has the kind of good health insurance that probably all of us in the room have and those that don't uh, suffer accordingly. So you see um, that in our district, which has about 4,456 residents, our data shows that we have touched at least 668 in some form through our programs that we support. Um, it could be through the schools, it could be through Mission Hospice or Pathways Hospice, it could be through the LIFT program through Peninsula Volunteers, which helps seniors get to doctor's appointments. So there's many different ways that we um, support the residents of Portola Valley. Hmm. One of the uh, recent things that we did do is approve a grant uh, for CERT for $45,000 for a new trailer. Um, we currently, the CERT program has two trailers and then the goal was to have three that would be um, in different areas uh, on the west uh, side of 280 in the, in the uh, Woodside Fire Protection District. And so this new trailer uh, will be on order very soon. And so we'll have that uh, third trailer. We have five board members and they are uh, elected by zone. Um, every time I show this map, I try to emphasize that zone E was not gerrymandered, that uh, it was actually prescribed by the consultant because it was the only way to get enough members of the district into one district because each of them have to be pretty equal in order to follow the law. So Portola Valley is in zone E and I am the um, elected representative from Zone E. I also emphasize that um, all of the district board members feel they represent the entire district. They, they don't vote or pay attention to uh, what zone they were elected from. One of our really highlight programs is the Healthy Schools Initiative. It's, it's a probably our major program. And it is modeled after a program designed by the CDC that intends to involve the whole community, the whole school and the whole child in the activities of um, keeping uh, school children healthy. Um, we fund a number of uh, areas in uh, Portola Valley. Uh, one is school nurses. Most schools do not have funds to fund a school nurse. They are required by law to have a school nurse. Um, many students require medications during the day and teachers are not allowed to, to give those medications, uh, but the schools don't have the funds 
to actually hire the nurses. So we have been funding nurses and pay for a part-time nurse for Portola Valley, as well as Sequoia Union High School District. Um, we also provide something that's kind of unusual, and that is a wellness coordinator. Um, I would imagine you could go around the country and ask schools if they had a wellness coordinator wouldn't know what you were talking about. This is somebody whose job is purely to look at the issues of that school and those students and what programs are needed to make them healthier. It could be that there are problems with drug issues. It could be that there's higher mental health problems in that school. Uh, it could be any number of things. That wellness coordinator works with the administration to design educational programs and activities to focus on those particular uh, problems. So we fund as well a wellness coordinator uh, for the Portola Valley School District. Um, in our fiscal year 22-23, um, we awarded uh, 4.05 million in caring community grants. Those go to about 60 different not-for-profit organizations that covers the gambit of things that would improve health as I showed you in the earlier slide. It could be a second harvest where we provide large amounts of money for them to provide food to residents. Um, the, um, there are various uh, food kitchens that we support. Um, there are mental health uh, organizations that we support. Uh, so many different um, community not-for-profits that provide uh, services to our members. The Healthy Schools Initiative, which I just talked about, uh, 4.2 million, and then we have an additional 3.8 million in a community impact fund for programs that are being developed. We also have a very collaborative approach to how we do things. For the most part, the healthcare district does not provide services. So everything we do is by funding a collaborator that we work with to provide these services. Um, Longshanging Partnerships, Ravenswood is one of our biggest uh, uh, organizations for providing access to care. Uh, Samaritan House, uh, which has a free clinic in Redwood City, as well as in San Mateo. Um, we fund the San Mateo County Health System for over a half a million dollars. And as I said earlier, uh, the school districts. Uh, during the COVID response, we recognized that many of the not-for-profits would not survive. They did not have sources of income. They couldn't uh, support their staff. Uh, they couldn't pay their rent. So we pumped out a lot of money, about a million and a half dollars to support those organizations so they could be here for us uh, today. And they are here for us today. We also provide support to Sunresis, um, Ravenswood Family Health Center, um, the Merit Samaritan House Clinics, and the San Mateo County Dental Clinic. One of the more exciting projects is coming on in the next few months. We will be approving a $6 million budget to build a oral health center in our current office building. We're going to move out and we're going to have the building completely revamped. We have recognized that oral health is one of the areas that is the least well served in our community and a primary driver of health. Um, so um, this uh, will come to the board, uh, I think at our next meeting and be approved and uh, hopefully built uh, over the next uh, 12 months. Um, I would just remind you that um, 
I believe in um, Southern San Mateo County, there are three dentists who will accept new Medi-Cal, Dental-Cal patients. So even if we expand Medi-Cal in the state, there is nobody to take care of them. This is what this kind of a clinic will be able to do and provide health uh, to our uh, members. So we have about 250,000 residents and you can see the cities that we serve. Um, we are like to think of ourselves as more of a community collaborator, not just a funder. But I think the, the thing that I would like you to remember is that a sweet spot for us is filling the gaps that are not filled by the regular healthcare system, uh, being that what it is. Uh, so we are always looking for areas that health insurance doesn't cover, that you really aren't gonna be able to get a doctor to do for you, um, things like that that will improve health. And that's where we, we make a significant difference in the community. So thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, really informative. I'll let uh, Jeff start if he has any questions. Um, I don't have any questions, but thanks, Jerry, for the work you've done on this for many years now. So um, I, I, I've, I've seen some of the things like uh, Meal on Wheels has been a really has been a great program to serve. And I, I mean, I've I've had the opportunity to go out and deliver once once a year with 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 you guys, and it's uh, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's great. big program. Yes, it's great to see all the and a really critical one. So it's been great to see all the little places where you guys are sort of getting in behind the scenes and, and helping someone fund something that, that might might slip away otherwise. So thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Mary. Oh uh, yeah, I uh, am curious to know how how you relate to the San Mateo County Health San Mateo County Health. Uh, and whether that's a symbiotic relationship, whether you help them identify their weaknesses and strengths and uh, and whether you strengthen them because yeah, they certainly kind of need you. Interesting question, Mary, because, you know, we are a tax supported organization to improve the health of the community. They're a tax supported organization to improve the health of the, of the community. Yeah. So are we supposed mm -hmm. to support them or are they supposed to support us? Mm -hmm. um, we have definitely identified programs that we feel we can help them get off the ground and do that we're not in their budget, for instance. And we have done that over like the years. Like dental care. Um, they have a major four or 500 person waiting list in their dental clinic. So we have supported extra dentists to help them lower that uh, waiting list. But we we don't um, fund their operations. You know, we, we don't get involved in that. We think that's the... Uh, how many county. people are in their, uh, in their jurisdiction? I mean, how does it compare? They're, they're roughly double double our district yeah. so we're we're pretty much all of southern san mateo county how do we get so lucky how did we get so lucky uh, yeah well you know if you if you um think about it there were some very smart people back in 1946 that that simply started the healthcare district there's about 73 in the state of california but um if you look at um uh, East Palo Alto, they're, they're not a healthcare district. They would love to be part of our district. Yes. The problem is whether they could get themselves to tax themselves to be able to be part of it because we don't think it's appropriate for us to move money to a new area uh, from our own tax base. Can you just clarify how the tax, taxes work to get to you? How, how the taxes work to get to you. Do you do they come directly to you or uh, get a, a check? check? <laughs> you get a check from the yeah, county. Yeah, from from the um, San Mateo County. county. You know, I, I did not introduce our CEO, Pamela uh, Hertzman, and uh, Luis Garcia, who is our um, chief information officer. 
No. Perfect. That's what I was wondering. It can you uh, come up and speak so the people listening, people are listening in online, right here, right. and it's very helpful to have the microphone you can sit here, on. Stay here. Oh. Yeah, I, it's so great to be here. Um, Jerry does a great job at presenting, but we have so many questions, and sometimes you, you're not always able to think of all of it. Yeah. I just wanted to be able to comment on a couple of those. Is that um, one of your questions was how does the tax dollars get to yeah, us? 1.3% 1. 1. of the county's property taxes come to the district direct deposit. Uh, they give us a notice every year and say, here's what we're expecting you to receive, and we base our budget off of that. Pamela, we don't get 1.3, right? It's yeah. all the special districts. The special, no, we get we get one point, yes, the special, yes. We are, yeah, let me, that's right. We're 1.3% mm -hmm. of all the special districts. It comes to, and we that's get a about portion what it gets to a that. portion of that. School districts, fire districts, all of that. Um, the other thing was the, what was the other question? Oh, the number of people in, uh, in the county. There's about 700,000 people that get, get uh, that are Medi-Cal in San Mateo County. Um, it's provided through the health plan. And so that's a lot of people for the county to take care of. And they do their best and they do a good job for the most part, but there's a lot of gaps and that's where the partnership, the symbiotic partnership comes in. Uh, and I think I'm really proud of the work that we do with our partners. Yeah, with the public. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Craig, any questions? Yeah, I was curious, what's your annual budget roughly? Our annual budget is our tax revenue is around 16 million. And we have a, some other investments that bring it up to about 18. And we try to get all of those funds back out. And it's not always that easy. You think that we just throw all the money out to all these big projects, but we want to do it responsibly. We want to think about this. We want to make sure that the nonprofits that we fund are able to do the job of getting the dollars out in a responsible way. And so, um, so we've got that 3.8 million that we have that actually there's going to be a lot less of it after this next board meeting, probably closer to about half a million by the time we provide additional funds to uh, some entities that we're looking at. So, uh, but we want to always have a little bit there. So when things come up or urgent needs come up that we can respond to those because we want to be responsive, but we want to be proactive at the same time. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I have one question and then a couple of comments. Um, the question is uh, community impact funds. Can you just give us an example of what that would be? Yeah, that's a great question. That's actually one of the parts that I was talking about. So we have these community grants and they're competitive grants. We have about four and a half million dollars that is there for nonprofits to apply. And we it's a, we have a, a really, I think, an interesting and a, and, a, and a unique way that we fund these partners. We don't just fund them and say, oh, you're on your own. You better meet your, your, your uh, goals and you better make sure you do what you told us or, or that's it. We won't fund you again. Instead, we're collaborative with them. We, we offer these dollars. They are competitive. But if you're having trouble meeting your goals, we want to know why. So we can also help provide resources, not necessarily financial, but other collaborations, other things that are gonna help us to support them because if they don't do well, we don't do well. We don't meet our mission if they don't meet theirs, right? So those dollars are, um, the, the, those dollars are four and a half million for the community grants and that's competitive, but then there's other dollars that if you were to come to us and say, we have this, amazing idea or this significant need in our community, you don't have to wait till our next grant cycle. You can come to us and pitch a proposal. Now you do that with me, I'm gonna vet that, we're gonna go back and forth, I'm gonna make sure it makes sense. I gave Dr. Sheffern a very hard time when we were looking at the CERT program. because This is a very important community to him, but we wanna make sure that everything is um, on the up and up and makes sense, and of course it is, but, um, one example uh, coming up with the dollars is um, Second Harvest. A huge demand 
-hmm. huge increase in their demand and their donor base is down 40%. So they're gonna come to our board on the 3rd of April and ask for another half a million dollars. So, and that's just a tiny piece of the budget in our community. Um, but that would be a, a use of those dollars, an example of why we would employ that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so th the comments that I have at risk of sharing too much, I come from a family of school nurses, so I'm way impressed that you guys are are realizing the, the value of getting that uh, presence on, on the campus. And I have a niece who just graduated from her residency in pediatric dentistry. And one of her areas of interest is exactly in the uh, community that you're about to start serving. And so I, I just have to remark on how important these types of support systems are given the gaps that are out there um, throughout the system. So uh, from me, I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank we you. We would appreciate having her come see our clinic and possibly work there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not Thank easy you. to always get people that want to yeah. provide services at the clinics because they can go there yeah. and get a lot more money, which it yeah. takes to do it. So, Great. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. It's okay. so good to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Thank Sharon. All right. Uh, really informative presentations. Um, it's great to hear what's going, going on in town and maybe not on our normal agenda. So thank you. Uh, next, turning more to town matters, uh, Sharif is going to present the town manager report. Thank you, Vice Mayor Hasko. Good evening, Council. A lot of updates to go over, a um, lot going on with the town. Um, first of all, to my left, I want to welcome Diego Ramirez. He will be our interim town clerk for the next three months or so at least and moving forward from there. Um, you may have recognized Diego. He's our familiar face at the front at Town Hall. He also has served as our admin ops specialist. So part of the mentality of next man up, next woman up, um, Diego has voluntarily agreed to help us and, and take the helms as our town clerk, and we're very excited to have him, so. Thank you, thanks in advance. Thank you. So with that, obviously we ask for patience as we get through and we won't be too hard on him today with his first council meeting, so thank you, Diego. Uh, we did have our council retreat um, on March 15th, and I thought that went very well. I was very excited to see some of the outcomes and goals that came out of that as town manager. I wanted to give a huge thank you to the Sequoias for hosting us. We had a great day there and what a wonderful and just beautiful facility that they have. And so thank you to Ginny Niles and everyone there for hosting us on that day. Um, I was very pleased that we have what I believe is set and council has set very realistic goals for the upcoming year. And one of the things that council talked about were these goals are not only for this calendar year, but also through the end of next fiscal year, which is June 30th of 2025 to give us some time to actually meet those goals and expectations. And so in very short order, as soon as we get back the summary and the um, goals and priorities for us from our facilitator, we will share that with the community and post online and the forum and everything else that we do too, so that we're all on the same page, literally, um, regarding those goals moving forward. So thank you, Council, for your time and effort and leadership. Um, I thought it was a very productive day. Uh, planning and building update, um, we are, just wanted to reiterate our building and planning counter hours are Monday through Friday, 8 to 12. That has not changed, but just want to re reiterate those hours. One thing that um, I am doing is given our very short staff that we have and kind of the skeleton crew that we have is that the counter will be closed on Fridays. And so what we're doing is closing town hall, um, just the counter on Fridays, and we'll make a change to the front um, signage and things. So we have some sort of a warm handoff, if you will. So it's not just the counters closed. There'll be a number for folks to call. There'll be other ways to drop off plans or other pieces if it's a Friday. But given the time that I've been here, Diego has been in the front as well. And um, working with staff, we get very minimal traffic on Friday. So I don't see any major impact with that. Um, we had already been closed every other Friday and that had very minimal impact as well. So counter hours, Monday through Thursday, eight to 12 um, for the um, building and planning counter. And then Monday through Thursday, eight to 12, a break for lunch, one to four for the actual town hall counter, if you will. I just want to Monday through Thursday? Monday through Thursday. What happens in the afternoon? I'm sorry. So the building and planning counters open from 8 to 12, Monday through Thursday. 
in the afternoon, the counter is open, but not for building and planning. Oh, okay. and that's, that's been our practice for years. I just wanted to reiterate yeah. that piece. Thank you, Mary. And uh, I have um, been meeting with many folks in the community, been doing many pieces as we continue with our um, building and planner, uh, building and planning director recruitment. We had the pleasure to have Tom Vlasic be part of that process. And we thank Tom for his time. And also, um, I met with the uh, chair of EPC, Chris Rains, last week, and I thought we had a very good meeting, him and I together, and we talked about the priorities for EPC and emergency preparedness, and just making sure we're all on the same page. And Chris was very um, informative for me, and we also were just comparing notes and comparing what, what we want to do, what are the priorities for the next coming months, and I think we're on the same page, and I think we're going to get some good traction in the next couple months with that, with all the things that um, EPC has done. I want to thank all the members of EPC for all the work that they've done for a lot of their work products is going to be coming to council in the next coming months and working very closely with Kim, our fire marshal as well. On Monday of this week, we also had a, a very important finance committee meeting. We held a finance committee meeting and George Savage hosted along with the group and we have provided some very good updates, I thought, with the <laughs> property tax was presented for the first time. Um, and gave a property tax history, the history of where we're at. Um, also talked about what's called the VLF shortfall or vehicle license fee shortfall that the state um, is facing along with all of us as cities and county. And we had Paula Cohn, who's one of the experts, give a very informative report um, to the finance committee. We also then followed that up with a Christian company report where Heather Rowden, their advisory manager, gave a very thorough report, I thought, on where we're at, making progress not only in our audits, the timeline for the audits, we're currently in the audit now for fiscal year 2021 and continuing with those throughout this year and the beginning of next year. And then also all of the areas that we need improvement on and what we're doing to get those done. So I thought that was very informative and the finance committee found that very helpful, I thought. Um, also um, at the end, I gave what's, what I call the financial viability um, presentation, if you will, really setting the stage for April 24th, which I'm holding a budget study session of state of the finances, if you will, on April 24th, and that's from 5.30 to 7 prior to the council meeting. Gives us a little bit more of an informal session to be able to talk about the state of our finances. And I'll be taking a step back and basically um, reiterating, re-discussing with the town what our finances are, where we're headed, what are some of the challenges that we have, and really the focus and the ask of the finance committee support and council moving forward is our three-year plan to make sure that the town of Portola Valley has a fiscally viable model and so um, please save the date for April 24th, 5.30 to 7. I think it's a very important meeting that um, we need to discuss, attend, and it'll be one of many meetings in the future. So this is part one of probably you know, many meetings over many years that we'll talk about this um, financial viability and making sure we have the right model, um, which ties into the getting the right people in the right spot, the PV refresh that we're having, that's happening now, all the way to um, this three-year plan, if you will, moving forward. I did get, um, receive a lot of good feedback from the finance committee. Um, we were limited to two hours and um, I've been in talks with George Savage of having maybe a, a part two discussion to follow up on that or having uh, my state of the finances, if you will, on April 24th and then following up again with finance committee, so depending on availability and the order of our discussions, but definitely more discussion to be had with the finance committee. Obviously, um, there was disappointment and frustration today as we received notice from HCD regarding our housing element and our zoning code amendments. As you know, on January 30th, 2024, the town received a letter from HCD certifying housing element, which was a, a big deal and a big accomplishment for our town. HCD at that same time also urged the town to continue timely and effective implementation of all of our housing element programs. The key step was adopting our zoning code amendments, as you all know. Just this morning, we received that letter, which basically said that they are decertifying our housing element because we have not adopted our zoning amendments. So um, as disheartening and, and frustrating as it is to receive that letter today, it really does not change our schedule or our path forward to get our zoning uh, amendments in place. But we had a plan in place to get those done over the months of um, March, April, and May. And so on March 20th, um, the Planning Commission considered the zoning code amendments. Given that these amendments are highly technical, the Planning Commission felt they needed the input from ASCC under the referral process established in the Muni Code. The ASCC met on March 25th and will provide input to the Planning Commission. 
proposed tentative schedule, which hasn't changed since we um, since they have talked in the last couple of days, is that on April 3rd, there will be a continuation of the March 20th Planning Commission meeting as a joint Planning Commission and ASCC meeting to review ASCC's feedback on the draft amendment. On April 17th, Planning Commission meeting will be held for the Commission to complete its review of the draft amendments and consider adopting a resolution recommending approval to Town Council of those amendments. And then in May, the two council meetings in May, which are May 8th and May 22nd, the May 8th meeting would be held for the first reading for town council, along with the second reading on May 22nd. And then planning commission um, and ASCC and town council would all be on the same page, obviously, with those meetings in place. I don't see the schedule changing. I don't think there's a need for change, per se, for that. So if um, we'll have, we have all these um, Meeting scheduled, they're in place. We announced that to the community. It's on our website. We put it out on the, on the forum and the web for folks to see. And so we encourage um, folks to listen in and be present for those um, meetings moving forward. This decertification of the housing element, if you will, does not change the schedule for the opt-in program in any way. That opt-in program um, schedule for us still remains scheduled for 2025. So I know there's been a lot of question about the opt-in program and how does that change and if this letter changes anything changes anything and that does not um, lastly for tonight we do have a consent agenda for tonight as you all know council and there's a uh, agenda item for a pinpoint contract there were some attachments that were missing in that pinpoint contract so i'm recommending and asking that we pull that and table that for the next council meeting so we'll have that same item under consent but we'll make sure that all the attachments are there for the public to see and we'll discuss that at the um, next meeting those are all my updates. Great. Um, we're not going to get into a substantive discussion, but does anyone have questions or clarifications on anything? Okay. Thank you, Sharif. Thank um, you. Very helpful. And um, we look forward to next steps. I guess my only point of clarification is after we successfully re get our zoning in place, then I think the next step would be a a letter back to HTB seeking re-certification, I suppose. Yes. Is that, like, can you play yeah, that out so a little HCD bit? has mentioned that they are only going to be looking at these zoning amendments. They're not, re this is not a look back or taking a look again at the entire okay. housing element. They are interested in making sure that we get those zoning amend amendments in place and that's what they'll be looking at. Okay. So and it's they our cited, understanding it should be a pretty straightforward process. And they cited certain programs specifically that related to the zoning that planning and ASCC are discussing Correct. so okay so there's nothing beyond that those discussion topics That's that we expect okay thank you all right um moving on to the consent agenda i think we're oh thank you very much thank you um oral communications uh there's no one in the schoolhouse here so rita comb is Yes, thank you for taking my comment. And I uh, really enjoyed those two uh, earlier presentations. Uh, the only thing I'd like to say to the community is really get a chance to watch last week's Planning Commission meeting and the ASCC meeting that happened this past Monday. Uh, the documents and the way uh, it, it was like the old days when the residents really had a part in what was going on and, and really looked at the things and, and had an opportunity. Uh, both meetings were very exciting for the community. If the people on the council, on the dais, have not seen the videos for those and were not present, please, I strongly suggest as we move forward with the housing element, with the opt-in, to uh, watch and review those meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. All right, I am not seeing let me see here. Yes, we have Christy Corley. Christy, go ahead. Christy, are you able to join? Yes, I just wanted to say um, I delayed last Friday. I, I'm concerned about access for the residents to the town administration building. I listened to the message machine last Friday. I did have something urgent to share and I waited to go on vacation 
because it said one to five o'clock would be open on Fridays on the message machine. Yet when I got there, it said it was closed every other Friday, but it didn't say what Fridays and nor did the message machine. So I would like to know on Fridays, if you're every other Friday, I would like to know if it's the first and third or second and fourth, but now you're saying you're gonna be closed on Fridays, but I'm still not clear Will there be somebody answering the phone on Fridays from home or are you closed where residents will not have access to, for example, you know, we had some casing of Golden Oak again and I wanted to increase the sheriff going around Golden Oak, but I wanted to talk to somebody to do that and request that. And to me, that's, that's uh, resident safety. So, this is a concern of mine. If there was an emergency, how can we get the backing of our town manager to call the sheriff? And would I have as much influence asking them as he would have? So that is uh, to me a, a question and to maybe fix the answering machine as to what it really is. Um, and that was a big concern last week for me. So resident um, access, and then uh, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Christy. I'll give it a minute to see if anyone else wants to comment. I'm not seeing anyone else. So I will close the public comment. Um, Sharif, I don't know if it's convenient to actually clarify the desk not being open versus outreach, or if you want to take a moment in the future and circulate a notice in your weekly uh, newsletter. Yeah, I'll make it very clear in the future of what, what days are. So to make it clear, we will be closed on Friday. There are people working in the building on Fridays. Just the counter will not be staffed. So we still have phone and voicemail. Okay. We will update the voicemail to make sure that reflects that. We're um, changing the plastic signs out front, all those different pieces. We'll make it clear for the public and for, for everyone at the Bay. And just um, to reiterate, we're, we get very little traffic on Friday, and that's why I'm comfortable doing this, because we just don't have the staff right now. In the future, that may change, but for, for now, we'll make it clear to the public and make sure that the signage is correct, voicemail is correct, okay. the communications are correct, those kind of things. As town manager, there are multiple ways to reach me, not on a Friday, whether it's any time of the day, and the, those ways are, are clear so okay thank, thank you. you great all right uh, now we'll move on to the consent agenda and my understanding is we are not we're gonna what's the technical <laughs> procedure uh we're moving the pinpoint contract forward we're not going to address that tonight does anyone want to pull anything out of the consent agenda oh i i had a couple of questions on the warrant list do you want to pull the warrant list? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. If not, uh, can I have a motion to approve? Oh, thank you. Public comment on the consent agenda. There is no one in the schoolhouse and I do not see anyone raising their hand on Zoom. So closing, oh, Rita, Rita comments. I think you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you. The item that I had the question about um, was was already pulled. I had sent a message to the town manager about those attachments that were missing. And I had also asked if we have a uh, conversion on our contracts. And so these good people uh, pinpoint or whatever, if we can convert some of those people to full-time employees in the future, if that can be part of our contracts. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rita. All right, I don't see any other hands raised. So uh, coming back to the consent agenda, uh, is there a motion to approve uh, items C and D, 5C? and D. So moved. I second it. All in favor? Or, uh, roll call? Yep. Yeah. 
Roll call. Council Member Elks? Aye. Council Member Hefty? Aye. Council Member Taylor? Aye. Vice Mayor Hasco? Aye. We have a quorum. Right. All right. <laughs> and it passes. <coughs> both, Motion passes. Both are true. Uh, okay, Mary, you wanted to pull the warrant list. So uh, do you want yeah, to lead uh, well, us through I, your um, questions? Sure. I had, uh, they're very minor. Um, in the spirit of uh, tightening the belt uh, at the same time that uh, you look for I income sources, I wanted to just ask um, why what Paradise Pools and Gardens does for us. For example, and uh, and I'll give you my other question, which is uh, PV Palooza. I there's no way will Mike say anything bad about PV Palooza, but uh, I didn't realize that we were going to do a platinum sponsorship for PV Palooza at the same time that we offer our grounds and our staff and all of our facilities for that uh, very successful event. We do have Cindy Rodas on the on Zoom that can help answer, but my understanding is that for PV Palooza, that is our contribution is the, from the town to PV Palooza. I don't know, Cindy, if you're yes, yes, that is correct. Um, good evening, Council. Um, yes, that is correct. That is our um, sponsorship for the PV Palooza event. Um, and additionally, for the Paradise Pools and Gardens, um, on page 13 of the agenda, um, you can see a little more additional detail for uh, each of the warrant list items. Paradise Pools and Gardens is a deposit refund for um, a oh, property. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Sure. Uh, yes. I think uh, I've been called a penny pincher. Uh, which I really am not, so we'll make people know that. Uh, but I think we need to look pretty carefully at sponsorships and, and uh, extra, giving things away at this particular time when we're actually in an existential situation. Uh, and uh, I would I would caution everyone not to be afraid to say this this will survive without us. If it and if it doesn't, maybe we can't afford it. So, Mary, are you putting that as something to think about as we approve budget items going forward? What are you? Well, this is this is what happened with the last budget. Uh, things got put in uh, immediately before the budget, uh, and that were the only things that we could possibly have cut. Um, and uh, then, when we realized we were really short, all of a sudden we'd already committed to these things. I, my my feeling would be. Until we know what the where the that we have the money to pay three thousand dollars to sponsor the PV Palooza, we are not the richest people in town. If I may, um, Vice Mayor Asco, please. The reason for the three thousand dollars for the PV Palooza is sort of in lieu instead of the staff time and the typical costs that it would take for staff to help coordinate this year. PV Palooza, instead of going through the Cultural Arts Committee decided to do it as a nonprofit. Yeah. And we sort of calculated the staff time versus giving a small donation to help them sort of get jump started. And the 3000 is less than what it would have cost for staff time and resources. And are we charging them for the facilities? We're not. So my my statement stands. <laughs> if I may, Vice Mayor. Please. Council Member Huff, do you bring a very good point? Um, not necessarily in the um, discussion of the warrant list, but all things are on the table. All budget is on the table. Stay tuned, as I mentioned, on the April 24th, where we kind of lay out that plan. But after that, we will be looking at all our contracts, all our consulting fees, our legal fees, all those different pieces moving forward. Right now, I'm looking at the staffing costs and our staffing structure, right? And so we have three major areas. So to your point, Mayor Hafti, all things are on the table. Everything will be on the table moving forward, right? We are in a budget deficit. And at the same time, we are a $12 million company right that serves the town and so this 12 million dollar company we have to make sure our priorities are in line we know what we're spending and how we're spending it so we don't overspend moving forward so the um non-fancy answers to be continued but point very well taken okay, thank you thank you if i may as well i just wanted to further just kind of clarify the um 
the funds, those are actually coming from the budget that was already approved by way of the uh, current fiscal year budget um, that directly came out of the committee um, budget. So there were no additional funds. It wasn't added in after. This is part of the budget that was already approved. Uh, I, I know that they're very proud of the fact that they're not a burden on the town, and I wanted to honor that. Okay, thank you, Cindy. Thank very you. helpful. All right. Um, do I have a motion to approve the warrant list? So moved. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Alps? Aye. Councilmember Hafti? Aye. Councilmember Taylor? Aye. Vice Mayor Osco? Aye. Motion passed. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, our regular agenda is to approve the Mays and Associate Agreements for fiscal year 2021-22 and 2022-23 for auditing services. Uh, I think there's a short presentation. Thank you, Vice Mayor Hasco. No presentation for tonight. Okay. Just um, simply bringing these to Council's attention for spending authority. Um, we are we currently contract with Mays and Associates. They are our current auditor. They are working on fiscal year 2021. Obviously, we are currently in fiscal year 24. And so what these two agreements do is basically um, enter an agreement so that Mays continues to be our auditor, continues to do the work as our auditors. Um, there are many state reports that they're working on for us that get submitted to the state. And without that agreement letter in place, they can't work on our behalf, basically. And so these um, audited numbers, the numbers you see for the engagement letters, I think one is 43,000, one's 45,000. Don't quote me. I didn't look at it just right now. But those um, sub $50,000 contracts, if you will, those are budgeted. We have allocated for those. This is just the spending authority to move forward. Mason Associates, they can continue their work for this year. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the council? I have a question. Uh, to what extent do uh, I know that many auditors will tell you what uh, what your what your weaknesses and strengths are, and there should be, in fact, a report. Uh, were we, in, in to what extent can we ask Mays why they put us into this, or why we got into this position, and how they could have managed to help us not get into this position? Good question, um, Councilor Hafti. Um, they do not provide feedback on operations, but what they will do and they're responsible for is providing the year-end audit. And so what they do is they help us prepare the financial statements for every fiscal year and they provide the audit. And so what will be coming up as they finish our audit for fiscal year 2021 is they'll be providing us with our weaknesses, strengths, um, things to improve on, what needs to be at the um, end of 21. Shored up. And then in 22, the same thing, they'll provide another report. And so um, guaranteed with the fact that we were late in our reviews and our finances, there will be there will be findings that we'll need to address. And someone might have might already be addressed by the fact that we're moving forward. So a finding might be you're not timely in your month and report, or you're not timely in your um, in your investment statement that we know, but they will state that because they're an auditor. And then we will state we have a plan in place to do that. And so that's exactly what they're doing is telling us at that point. So every year they will bring a audited financial statement. Oh, it isn't up to them to mention that we're that far behind. No, and that's where I come in. That's where staff comes in. And that's where a Christian company comes in. Talk about the actual operations of where you're behind, what needs to be done. And if you recall, a Christian company did the red, yellow, green, if you will. So the red is what we need to take care of urgently. And that's what we're working on. Any other questions? No. Just hope they do a good job. OK. All right. Going... Uh, I guess I do have a question. Okay. Uh, and I, I'll keep on harping on this. Uh, my experience is that if you really have audit problems, which we clearly do, that we should have an audit committee. Um, and I brought this up before. I, I, would it be in line with this question as to, to ask Mays whether they uh, we w could have con prevented some of our problems by actually having a committed audit a uh, group that would uh, review the audit before it comes to either the finance committee or the or the manager. We don't have an audit problem per se, Councilman Hafti. We have a timeliness problem. We as 
a town did not submit our reports on time. And that's what the auditors are reporting on. So by default, we also have our finance committee, which actually serves as your finance and audit committee. And so they would meet um, ad hoc when the audit comes out. They mm -hmm. would actually review the audited financial statements and then provide their um, review, if they will, moving forward. So our finance committee does serve as our finance and audit committee. They obviously haven't for the past three years. So yes, we, have have a, we have a timeliness problem. It's not necessarily an audit problem. But we may have an audit oversight problem, which is that we have a finance committee that wasn't looking at the audit. They weren't, there was no audit to look at, right? Right, so that's, but that's, they were not looking for why, why do we not have an audit? So uh, that suggests that we, there needs to be a separation Well, in well, my mind. This is clarification. So we can come back and have the discussion. Um, Craig, do you have any questions, clarification? No. Okay. Um, neither do I. Um, so we can go to public comment. Again, no one is in the schoolhouse. So there's one hand up, read a comment. Hi, thank you for taking my comment. And I'm sorry to keep commenting, but uh, you know, for the year end financials and the uh, town audits, I've been one of those people that have been asking for years uh, about the status and if it's been submitted and uh, have gotten a variety of answers over the past couple of years. And it's nice that we're, we're moving forward, but we still don't have um, anything completed yet. Uh, I guess it was last year that uh, I guess I think it was Mays had done the 2020 town audits and there was lots of discussion about why don't we just bundle all the audits together and get them done and there was a letter that was uh, written or the statement in that 2020 audit about um, things that the town can do better and uh, perhaps uh, you know that needs to be looked at and there was lots of excuses, which I was surprised in the management letter and in the letter from the 2020 audit about the shortness of staff and whatnot. But you know, there was comments about uh, the heaviness of our, our contractors and the excuse was that the contractor didn't have time. Uh, and so that it, the onus is on our town that these audits and the year end financials did not get done, but moving forward, uh, we should have an audit committee separate from the finance committee. And if we were to look at the government guidelines, they should be separate. And that's something that the finance committee was looking at and discussing last year, but um, hopefully we'll get back on track with that. But the statement from our auditors, that woman, I believe her name was Grace. She showed up at a finance committee. Uh, perhaps some of the new council members can uh, review that particular meeting. There were some very good comments that she had stated. And it seems like the onus was on the town not doing the year end financials or doing the audits. So that's on us. And this is why we're in this situation. But moving forward, and I also want to note that it looks like this contract is already signed. It was signed on 321. Thank you. Thank you. As town manager, I cannot be any more clear in that we have three audits to catch up on. I have laid out the timelines for each audit, when we expect to get those audits, when we expect to receive those audits, which month we were going to receive those audits. I've hired an outside company to help us with those audits. I laid out the plan to finance committee. And so I think I've been very clear on what we're doing, when we're receiving those audits and how we're moving forward. So thank you. All right. Um, I see no other hands on Zoom. So bring it back to council for any discussion. Beth doesn't have anything. Okay. Um, so, Sharif, I, I guess in terms of a process point, um, or Catherine, actually, this is the legal, Although there's a signature here, I assume it's not effective until the council has approved it. Is that correct? Correct. Um, this is coming to council because the amount of the contract exceeds the town manager signing authority. Mm -hmm. um, so it is not effective until council yes. approves. So, okay. So if we approve it, it will be effective. 
Um, and then second, I, I would assume that the 2020 audit, that that's part of what is being reviewed in Christian Co. And, and the whole, they will have access to the history. They will be looking at that and taking it into account. And I would expect that they have a separate set. I mean, they've already provided the, the different listings of urgent, et cetera. So to me, I think we've got a lot of people looking at this at this point uh, and taking into account the history. Um, yeah, Chris's, Chris's uh, recommendations, um, Vice Mayor, takes into account the auditor's findings, best practices, and we'll, where we need to move forward. Okay. So. Okay, great. Um, all right. Well, uh, from my point of view, we need an <laughs> auditor. We need to keep in mind what their role is relative to the other financial experts we're, we're engaging. And I think to me, it sounds like we've got a good plan for that. Um, so um, are we looking for a motion to approve the contract? Okay. Okay. Move to approve the contract. Second. Okay. Um, oh. Council member Elves? Aye. Council member Hufty? Aye. Councilmember Taylor? Aye. Vice Mayor Hasco? Aye. Motion to pass. Great. All right. So that's the regular agenda. Now we're on to council subcommittee liaison and uh, regional agency reports. Beside the items that are included in the packet, does anyone have something that they wish to report on? Or does anybody want to comment on, on what they might have submitted? I have some comments. Yeah, please. Um, so this for me was a busy week. Um, Monday, we had the uh, finance committee for two hours and AACC for four hours back to back. It was um, an exciting moment, especially <laughs> given I had just walked into town at like 335. Um, I would like to recommend that everyone um, review both of those if they, if they have the opportunity. Um, the finance committee, um, Sharif touched on it already, but it was a very interesting presentation on basically where our money comes from. Um, the property tax, the VLF, the ERAF, um, in enough detail to sort of understand some of the complexities. So I really appreciated that. Um, Christian Company also did a nice presentation, you know, explaining, you know, what they've done for us, what they're going to do. And it was sort of broken down in sort of, you know, what was urgent, what they've done now, what they're doing in the next three months. So it de definitely worth looking at. Um, and then finally, um, the town manager's report on the PV viability, I think is critical. And obviously we'll talk about more on April 24th, but I think it's important that all residents understand this issue because um, it is a serious issue. So that was the finance committee, which ran right into ASCC. Um, ASCC focused on zoning um, it was a very productive meeting. Um, they're in the process of writing up sort of their comments to take to the joint meeting next week. Um, and I think we're lucky. I think we're lucky to have the ASCC reviewing this stuff. I think that they've um, had some significant input into how we might think about zoning um, somewhat different than the way the consultants were. Um, but I also think both for the planners and the consultants, it was also useful that they realized, A, that, you know, the sort of Portillo Valley way, but but more than that, I think there was a recognition that maybe we don't want everything to be totally buttoned down because it actually gives us a little more flexibility to have some of this stuff in, in sort of a broader context. And so there, there was a lot of good discussion. Um, and if you're interested in zoning, I would highly recommend um, listening to that. And then lastly, on Tuesday night, um, the Woodside Fire Protection District Board met. Um, and the primary, at least for this body, the, the primary thing was um, 2401, which is the Defensible Space Ordinance, um, had its first reading. Um, there is um, a number of resident comments. Um, I'd say that there's a lot of progress that's been made. Um, the district removed um, one of the provisions that um, some of the residents considered particularly onerous. And so, you know, in theory, it will move to a second reading next month. Um, the main thing that I've heard from residents has been a concern that not everybody's gotten this and the, the district is committed to sending out a postcard um, in the next month with links to the ordinance, uh, links to a set of guidelines, which 
basically explain the ordinance, but in a sort of a more positive way of you know what you can do. So it sort of interprets the ordinance to help people understand what's going on. And then uh, a Q and A where the the fire marshal is committed to just answering anybody who wants to send things to um, info at I want to say. Um, let me let me not use their e email address, but it's info at whatever the district's standard email address is. I think it's Woodside Fire Protection, but I'm not sure if it's .net or org. Um, and so I would encourage anybody that has questions after reading the ordinance to submit those so that you know we can all see the answers. Um, Fire Marshal Giuliacci has been really great about meeting with people and answering individual questions. Um, I've suggested her as great as it is to meet at Roberts and stuff it's it's of limited um, impact. And things like the Q&A, where it's published, where people can read it when they have time, I think will actually get more people. So that combined with the actual physical mailing, I think will go a long way toward helping people understand um, what's going on. So do you know the timing of the FAQs? Um, my understanding is she's trying to get the FAQs done for um, the next reading. Um, I think one of the things, certainly one of the things I suggested to the board, I, whether they you know take that up or not, is that waiting until we get the guideline, get the postcard out, get the guidelines out, get the FAQ out before they do the final approval. And I think as much as anything, that's a potentially a perception thing that let the public feel like they get to see this before it's sort of already been passed. Whereas if they pass it and then people finally find out about it, I think people are going to feel a little cheated that it's like, oh, well, we never even got a chance to comment. So I don't know what they'll do next, um, but they're certainly aware of, of that concern from the public. That's it for me. Thank you. Um, I have uh, two reports in here, but um, I, I we, they came in before. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while, and I don't think they're really particularly relevant. But one thing that I it fits in with what you were talking about, Greg, is that uh, the Conservation Committee, which met yesterday maybe, uh, suggested that uh, they get Kim to come in and do a, in the in the town in the uh, schoolhouse and do a live uh, review of the garden around the schoolhouse with people in attendance, so people would get a real idea of what they expected to be removed and what they don't expect to be removed. And uh, that way we'd get ahead of ourselves and make our schoolhouse a little bit safer, maybe, uh, but people would be able to attend uh, such an event. That was their offering. Okay. And I think uh, that was because conservation meets with uh, fire prevention. 30 PC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so just, just to clarify, so this came from WPC, it was at the WPC meeting. The idea was to actually do a fire inspection, like you would do a home of okay. the schoolhouse. Yeah. yeah, of us basically, yeah. but particularly the schoolhouse, so that anybody who was interested in seeing what an inspection looked like without actually doing it at their house, they could come down and see, you know, how they how the district and how the inspector team does their work. Yeah. So that that's what like it, if our oak people are imagining their favorite tree is going to disappear. So. It gives them a chance to see what the reality is. Right. Any other? I have one uh, report. Uh, there was a telecon with the Portola Valley School District, EPC, Woodside Fire Protection District. Um, and essentially, it was starting to put together the, the different threads of an evacuation plan for the town um, the school district had. A series of questions about what's been done by whom, what the status is, and they're they're trying to from here on in set more regular meetings to touch base and see what's been finalized, what they need to feed into, and they also want to uh, coordinate with other other schools in town. So it was really a preliminary first step, but it was good to see everybody that had the relevant information on one Zoom call. So look forward to uh, seeing that flush out as, as these things move forward in parallel. So do you, do you know, is the district working on their evacuation plan? Because I mean, the way this is set up, right? I mean, there's a town evacuation plan, but 
the school district is an entity on, in and of itself, and they're responsible for their evacuation plan. So are they starting on that process? Do you know? Uh, I think this was the the first step. I do not know the status. Okay. I okay. do not. Okay. They were more asking for information on the status of all the other eaters into the plan so they could look for any conflicts or issues that they need to be thinking through. So the, the next step is to meet mid-April and more regularly after that. So okay. yeah. I think the next report will have more for you. Yeah, because there'll be some significant things coming from the school. Um, yeah. You know, shelter in place, potentially parents not being able to get into town to pick up their kids. Yeah. So I think that's going to be an important plan once it gets sorted out. I agree. I agree. Any other reports? Okay. I just want to report on what a great job Sharif is doing. <laughs> not a and we greatly report. thank you for okay. your financial expertise and your hard work. There's been a lot going on. Um, well, can you take this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, opening up for public comments, Christy Corley. Yeah, I'm not sure there was a report on Hawthorns. Do we see one written or verbal? Uh, if not, I have what, since I attended four hours, I can there, do it. Yeah, Christy, there, there's a, um, I believe at the end of the packet, there is a report submitted. Let me see. I'm just going down. Mayor Warnikoff submitted. Yeah. Sarah Sarah submitted that. Thank you. Do you have a comment? Yeah. I, I think um, in my observation, they are, um, it seems to me they're leaning towards 50 parking places across from Roberts. She probably wouldn't put that in writing, but uh, I'm just going to say and that it was 30 to 70 parking and they came up with 50 by a guesstimate. And so there was some question whether 50 is needed and whether we need 35, for example, because once you build, they will come. Um, and so those parking places may be seen from Alpine and directly across from Alpine, um, I mean, Robert's parking lot if it, the vote goes that way. I don't know, but it seemed to me to be leaning that way. Um, but it is not final until the vote. And then there was a question of three benches, which way they uh, were faced on the hill and uh, uh, something moved on one bench down uh, the, the top knoll to move it over a bit. So the uh, ranch uh, houses would not see that bench as readily and then not towards the houses, of course. Um, and then uh, it seemed that the combination of Sweet Springs Trail uh, connecting with our trails, Alpine Trail, it seemed that was the most um, uh, conflict, uh, meaning that the ranch, maybe 110 uh, were against that connection. And then our trails committee was saying that they want the connection. That's what we're built for is to connect our trails. So that, those are the three takeaways I had. Um, I personally would not like to see the parking along Alpine Road, and I'm still concerned with the uh, safety of in and out. And I was thinking a turn lane rather than everybody stacked up behind because every minute, if there's 50 parking places, 50 minutes, uh, you have a lot of people waiting to get into a parking lot with 50 and you have people that are also going to school and coming from school. So. Could it? Could you have a pocket turn lane? And there's Christy, seemed... you got to wind up okay. uh, if That's you can. It. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. And I see that Sarah's report was from the Trails and Paths, which mentions the POG. I have a feeling that she'll submit a more fulsome report um, next time around. And uh, I do encourage people who are interested to pay attention to the MidPen uh, updates. There's a long process there. Any other uh, public comments? All right, I don't see any hands. Uh, so at this point, 
Um, I think we are motion done. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. Aye.